No, Matt, we're not doing live streaming. Live streaming is for like mega churches and it is dumb. People need to be coming into the church building anyway. No, 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 no. We are never going to need live streaming. Hey, Matt. So I uh, was reading that they're like shutting down churches and stuff. So um, about that live streaming. Hey everyone, The Digital Pastor here. Thanks so much for joining me for part one of four on getting your church up and live streaming. Before we go any further, please help support this channel by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment, and making sure notifications are turned on so you can stay up to date with all of our content. With everything going on with the coronavirus around the world and especially in America, I've seen a huge spike in emails and people reaching out for help getting their church up and live streaming. In these four videos, we will go into more detail on setting up your live streaming system. These videos are also geared towards setting up a live streaming PC and not a traditional dedicated hardware switcher. My strong suggestion to churches is to build your streaming system around bringing your video cameras and sources into a Windows machine and not a traditional hardware type switcher. The reason for this is software based switching and streaming through a program like vMix is much more easily scalable and upgradable than a hardware switcher. When you buy a hardware switcher, you are stuck with the capabilities of that hardware. Whereas a software based switcher can be upgraded with more RAM, more processing power, a better graphics card and new software features as the technology of live streaming progresses. The four videos in this series will be number one, cameras, number two, video capture devices slash computers, number three, audio capture, and number four, broadcasting live. In this video, we're focusing on the first step in the streaming process, which is where your live stream starts, your camera. I've included links in the description for recommended cameras at different quality levels, so check that out in the description below. One of the questions I get asked most often is, what camera can I use for live streaming? Or will a DSLR work? Or can I use my webcam? Or is my camera compatible with live streaming? The great news is that virtually any camera with a live physical video feed coming from the camera or a network feed can be used for live streaming. There are a few things to keep in mind when choosing your camera for your streaming system, so let's just jump right in. Number one is the live video connection type. The first requirement of your camera is that it has a physical video feed that comes out of the camera. The only exception to this is the IP camera, which we will talk about later in this video. The most common connectors in modern cameras will be HDMI, mini HDMI, micro HDMI, and SDI. Some older connectors that your camera may have could include composite or component. The connection type of your video output from the camera will affect how you run your cables as well as how you capture your video in your computer. For instance, HDMI has a more limited distance you can run cables without requiring additional hardware like extenders or boosters. The SDI cable is able to run longer distances without additional hardware. Both HDMI and SDI are able to be sent over longer distances using Cat5V slash Cat6, as well as fiber optic cables using converters. The HDMI connector is an all around great connector type because it is more common and versatile than SDI. Most cameras using SDI tend to be on higher end broadcast cameras. Some cameras will have both an HDMI and an SDI output. Without getting into the technical side, in general, I recommend a camera with HDMI as its output for most situations. HDMI, mini HDMI, and micro HDMI are all the same type of cable with a different connector at the end. Converters and adapters can be purchased for very little to interface with whatever HDMI port you are feeding. Most cameras with HDMI have a full-size HDMI output or a micro HDMI output. As long as your camera has one of these three types of HDMI ports, you can use adapters to make it the full size HDMI connector to get it into your capture device. Number two is resolution and frame rate. Without going into great detail, I would recommend making sure your camera can shoot at least 1080p 30. You want to be sure that your camera can output a progressive video signal and not only an interlaced signal. As you are looking at different cameras, look for that letter P or progressive in the camera's frame rate. This would be listed like 1080p 30 or 1080 30p, which stands for 1920 by 1080 resolution progressive at 30 frames a second or 1080p 60 or 1080 60p, which means 1920 by 1080 resolution progressive at 60 frames per second. If you're looking to expand to higher quality in the future, you could get a camera that can produce 4k 30 or 4k 60 if you have the budget. With 4K becoming much more common, there are some fantastic 4K capable cameras in the $1,000 to $1,500 ballpark. Number three is zoom. Zoom is an important feature to consider when choosing a camera. If you have a deep sanctuary and the distance from your camera to the stage is long, a typical camera may not have the zoom capability to get the desired shot. 
Check the optical zoom on the camera as you choose your camera. Do not base it off of a digital zoom, but an optical zoom. A digital zoom simply zooms in on the pixels of the video and will pixelate as you zoom in further. An optical zoom will physically zoom in the camera's lens with no pixelation. Now that we've covered three important features of cameras to consider, here are some of the cameras that will work that I often get asked about. DSLRs. A DSLR camera will absolutely work for live streaming. These would be cameras like a Canon 5D, Sony a6000, Nikon, etc. And here are a few things to consider with DSLRs. Number one is the clean live feed. Depending on the camera that you have, the HDMI feed coming from the camera may have on-screen data in the feed. All of the text and data on your camera's screen may come through that HDMI feed. However, most DSLRs have an option in the settings to turn this off on the HDMI feed. If you are going to use a DSLR, be sure that the camera can supply you with a clean video feed with no on-screen display information. You can check this by plugging the DSLR into your TV and verify you can achieve a clean feed. Number two is the way that most DSLRs handle their zooming. The majority of DSLRs zoom by physically twisting the lens versus pressing the zoom in and zoom out button. This can make smooth zooming and handling of the camera a bit more difficult. You can always use a DSLR for an easy static shot that doesn't require zooming. Webcams. USB webcams are typically usable for live streaming. I haven't run into a webcam that has not worked for live streaming. Most webcams don't have the greatest picture, so I would recommend staying away from them if you can. Phones. Phone cameras can be compatible with live streaming systems, but I would not recommend using a phone. Some phones have a connector to give you a feed from the camera, but in general, I would not recommend doing this. GoPros. GoPros are fantastic cameras for auxiliary camera shots for live streaming. They especially go well on things like drummers, in front of keyboard players, or in areas of the stage where being low profile is important. IP cameras. IP cameras are also great for live streaming. This would include cameras that output NDI, RTSP, RTP, and RTMP. Many times IP cameras are going to be PTZ or pan tilt zoom cameras. These cameras can be very handy as many can be controlled remotely by a joystick or software and do not require a camera operator physically in front of the camera. The other benefit of having IP cameras is that many of them are able to be powered using the same ethernet cable that carries the data over the network. This is called power over ethernet and allows you to mount your camera essentially anywhere that you could run a network jack. This lets you avoid having to run a power outlet to an obscure place in your sanctuary or worship center. I have one more tip when choosing cameras. This is to try to match your cameras as much as possible. You don't want to mix two or three different brands of cameras with multiple different models. The consistency of your video shots will be lacking as the color of each camera and style of each camera will look different. This is most important on the cameras used for your speaker. If you have three different shots of your pastor from different angles and the cameras are all different, the video will not look the same and be fluid as you switch between them. Unfortunately, this becomes distracting for the viewers as they're watching. My go-to pick for a camera for churches is the Sony FDR AX100. This camera can output up to 4K at 30 frames a second and has a fantastic image. These run for about $1,500 on Amazon and I have a link in the description below so you can pick that up. There is a whole lot more to go into when looking at cameras, but this will get you started in choosing your camera. Is there a favorite camera that you have or what camera do you use in your church? Comment below and let me know. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll do my best to respond to every comment. God bless you and your church as you continue to grow in your streaming ministry and stay tuned for video two coming very soon.